Good Monday, freshman. Good to have you back. I hope you had a really, really good weekend, a little bit of time of relaxation. Uh, maybe time to get out of the house actually a little bit, go on some walks, be safe. But I hope you had a good weekend. We're ready to start here on Monday with our next to last prayer journal for this semester. And this week we'll be talking about Paul's the end of Paul's second missionary journey, all the way through his third journey, and with his arrival in Jerusalem. If you remember, where did the Gospel of Luke start? Yeah, in Jerusalem, with Zechariah and Elizabeth. Where did it end? As the disciples went back to Jerusalem after Jesus ascended. Where does Acts begin? in Jerusalem as Jesus ascends and then they choose another apostle Matthias to replace Judas and then the day of Pentecost so Jerusalem is central and at the end of this week we'll come back to Jerusalem for the last time in the book of Acts and then we're on to the end and that will be next week let's go ahead and uh, uh, begin in prayer though if you'll bow with me please father and God thank you for this day, for this week, for all the opportunities and blessings and challenges before us. Father, I pray that as we hear the story of, of Paul and Silas and Timothy and Titus and all those who went about telling your story, who went about doing your work, that we might fold our lives into that story, that your story, your actions, the story of your son and our savior Jesus might become foremost in our thoughts and in our words, that the blessing, the kindness that Jesus showed and that was showed by Peter and his healing and by Paul might become our kindness. Father, that in all things you might be honored. And your blessings spread throughout our life. We pray this in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. All right, let us begin here with this slide. Here we go. And here we go. There we have the themes up again, just to remember, as, as I prayed a moment ago, we are to continue to, to tell the story of and to continue to do the work of Jesus here on this planet. That's what the apostles were called to do. That's what Paul did. And that's what we are called to do. That the gospel cuts across all barriers. That the Holy Spirit is the power which enlivens us, which motivates us, which strengthens us to do God's work. That to know about God, to have all these facts in line is not the same as knowing God. Knowing God is much more like a, like a relationship. Well, it is. It's, it's knowing someone so deeply that you, you resonate with their spirit. You can almost predict what they think. Obviously, we cannot ever do that with God. And yet, there's some sense in which our mind becomes, needs to become like God's mind, or as, as Paul writes to Philippians, that we should have the same mind as Christ Jesus, all right, that God's salvation is for everyone. There is no one beyond the, the reach of God's grace and God's forgiveness that does not minimize sin. No, there are effects to sin. Talk to David about it, right? Was he forgiven of his adultery and of his murder? Yes. But four of his children rebelled against him. Four of his sons ended up dying. And as he prayed, as he cried out to God, my, my son, Absalom, my son, would to God I had died instead of you, right? There are regrets. And yet God is forgiving and he will continue to work through us. But don't choose sin. All right, sorry, end of sermon. And God uses circumstances to place his servants where he wants them. We saw how... Paul could not get into Bithynia, and that ended up taking him over to Europe. And today we'll see a little bit more of that. All right. Topics for this week. Today, you ought to be reading Acts 17, where Paul, after leaving Philippi, being escorted out of town by the city council, goes from Philippi, if you can follow my little map here, up here, from Philippi on down here to Thessalonica. It's hidden behind the word right there on the coast. And there, 
he, uh, he goes to the synagogue, as he always did. The synagogue were the place who knew the will of God. They knew they ought to be hearing the Messiah. And he starts preaching there, and, uh, and he explains that this Jesus I'm proclaiming to you is the Messiah. He's risen from the dead, and people begin to follow him. But including, I'm sorry, some God-fearing Greeks, guys like Cornelius, guys like Perhaps the jailer, well, it doesn't say the jailer, but folks like Cornelius, folks who'd sort of come close to the synagogue were thinking about this, but yes, Jesus, yeah, we can, we can follow him. But other Jews, seeing the excitement he's causing, got jealous. They grabbed some rabble from the streets. It mentions here in verse uh, chapter 17, verse 5, bad characters in the marketplace formed a mob and started a riot. Yahoo! Yahoo! Uh, they knew that Paul had been at Jason's house. He was associated there. So they ran to Jason's house looking for him, couldn't find him. They dragged Jason and his household, the folks around him before the city officials and shouted, this people have caused trouble all over the world, right? I, in fact, the original Greek says they turned the world upside down. Remember Luke's, Luke and reversal, right? The, the, the poor become rich, whereas the rich become poor. Hey, they are turning the world upside down. Oh, interesting. All right. But anyway, they're defying Jesus, uh, pardon me, Caesar's decree, saying there's another king called Jesus. So they, uh, people are upset. They forced Jason to post a bond. That's interesting. A bond is saying, we think there's a problem here. We want some of your money. If there's any more problem, we take that money and we come arrest you too. So that night they sent Paul and Silas out of town. Uh, that's uh, verse 10, to Berea. We're going to come over from here, from Thessalonica. We're going to go up inland a little bit over here to Berea. There they start preaching in the synagogue again. And notice what it says about the Bereans. They were of more noble character. That's verse 11. Why? Read it. Read it. Yes, they were excited. They wanted to know. They were eager. They wanted not only to know about, but to know this Jesus who revealed God. And they weren't just excited, but they were also concerned, is this true? They studied the scriptures. Now, this is not the New Testament. We don't have that together yet, but this is the Old Testament. They probably went back and looked at those servant songs in Isaiah. They looked at Deuteronomy 18 about another prophet to come. They may have looked at Abraham's promise that through you all nations of the earth will be blessed. They may have looked at the promises to David uh, in 2 Samuel and in the Psalms. That Psalm 110, the Lord said to my my Lord said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my right hand and I put make all your enemies your footstool. Messiah things. Okay. However, Thessalonians heard about this and actually left Thessalonica to came and cause problem in Berea. They were so worried that uh, that uh, Paul might get killed that uh, verse 14, they sent Paul away immediately. Apparently Silas and uh, and others hung around. Silas and Timothy stayed in Berea. They were apparently a little quieter, a little more okay. So Paul down all by himself. Athens. And now we're going to get one of the neatest, neatest passages to me. And we're not going to be able to spend enough time on it. We're going to spend most of our time here talking about this passage. Paul goes to Athens. And as he goes into the city, who knows, maybe he couldn't find a synagogue. And he walks and he sees these idols. Remember from the prophets how idols were just so awful. All right, they would have been like eating worms, okay? Idols were a sense that human to human depravity and human desires have just gone crazy, that you could know that there's a creator God, you could just see this here, but instead you're going to go worship gods of war and gods of, gods of, of, of traveling gods and little gods who do this and do that, gods of hearth and gods of fire and gods of, okay, all these little and bitty gods instead of the great God over it. It just made him sick. And so he began talking to telling people. Uh, he does reason in the synagogue, but some of these philosophers, Epicureans and Stoics, it mentions, those are a couple of big, fam big names there, that say, come and say, he seems to be advocating foreign gods because he's talking about Jesus 
and Anastasia. Oh, yeah, that's the, the Greek word for resurrection, Anastasis. Maybe they thought this was Jesus and his consort and his wife, okay? But anyway, they're, they're confused. Uh, and then they finally grab and says, look, you're saying some things we don't get. Could you come, come, come here to Mars Hill, to this place where we hold court, where we hold council, and come. We're going to give you a venue. You can tell us all about your new faith, your new understanding. Verse 21 really takes a shot. It says, all these guys love nothing to do more than talking and listening to new ideas. It's not like they ever had any work to do. They're sort of wealthy, relied on slaves. Yeah, just sit around and channel surf except instead of channel surf, they're religion surfing, all right? Try all these ideas. Paul is going to preach a unique sermon, because remember, he can't start by saying, Messiah is prophesied in the Old Testament. These guys don't know Old Testament. He can't start with promises to Abraham, or that this is going to be the, the descendant, the son of David, that's going to sit on the throne. You don't have that, so listen to what he does. All right. People of Athens, up the end of 22, I see that in every way you're very religious. As I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I found an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. Pause. They were probably so scared they might have left one up. They're going to go, zap. Hey, this is, in case we miss one, here, we're going to offer some things to an unknown God. And then Paul says, look, so you're ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this I'm going to tell you about. He finds a gap. He finds something that these guys believe. He says, okay, now I'm going to talk with you about that. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and doesn't live in temples like the Acropolis over there, you know, just not too far away, that made by hands. And he's not served by things we do as if he needed us. Rather, he himself is the one who gives. It's not that we give him. He gives everyone life and breath and everything else. In fact, he made all nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he, avoid, he appointed times in history and boundaries of their land. In other words, there's not a local god, Athena of Athens, and another god over here of Delphi, Delphi and Oracle, and another god up here, god Zeus over Olympus, right? There's not gods from different places. He made the whole earth, and he's the one who puts people where they belong, all right? This god did this so that, verse 27, they would seek him and maybe reach out for him, and find him, even though he's not very far, as one of your own writers. Oh, notice this. Paul knows his Greek writers. As one of your writers has said, we are his offspring. Right? We, we, he made us. We come from him. 29. For since we're God's offspring, we shouldn't think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill, right? Stone, iron, gold, right? Right? They don't breathe, they don't heal themselves, they don't see, they don't hear, right? They're, they're, they're the lower form of life. You and I are up here. If we're made, if God made us, surely he's higher than us. Okay, going on here. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent. For he has set a time when he'll judge the world with justice by the man he appointed He's given proof of this to, by, to everyone by raising him from the dead. And this, boy, this is it. He's raised him from the dead. This is Anastasis. This is not his girlfriend, Anastasia, but this is, he has raised Jesus from the dead. And what happens when he gets to this point with the next verse? When they heard about resurrection of the dead, someone, <laughs> that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> the old dead bodies are right. Oh, get away from here. Others said, yeah, we might hear more later. Yeah, that was interesting. When I used to write a lot of music, that was the thing you hated to hear. Oh, that was interesting. Not very good, but interesting. However, there were a few who listened and became believers. That's the way the gospel works. Some listen, many don't. But for the ones who listen, you and I are the channels of God's blessing. We are the carrier of the divine word. We're the conduit, not, not, not in and of ourselves, but we are the means by which the Holy Spirit can move into their lives through their trust and repentance from old ways and obedience. That's what happens.
We're going to skip a little bit. He goes on to Corinth from there. It tells the story. It's a little isthmus. Uh, Corinth was one of the most evil cities of his time. Las Vegas, right? Remember, if you've ever heard the phrase, what happened in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Well, that's the sort of thing that happened in Corinth, too. So he goes there. He actually uh, meets some Jews who'd been kicked out of Rome, Priscilla and Aquila, and works with them. They're tent makers, too. They begin working together. One last story, and then we'll cruise pretty quickly. Paul gets in trouble here in Corinth again, and he gets arrested. He's brought up before the city, uh, the, uh, uh, pardon me, he's brought up before Gallio, who was a proconsul. And they bring him up and said, look, this man is persuading to people to worship God contrary to the law. We need to hammer him. And Gallio says, I don't care. This is you guys' fight. If you'd ask something about a misdemeanor or a crime, yeah, I'd listen to you. I'm in chapter uh, seven, uh, pardon me, chapter 18, verse 15. But since it involves questions about words and names, your own law, settle it yourselves. I'm not going to judge this. Anymore. So he throws them out of court, drives them off. And in fact, they turn on their own synagogue leader, Sosthenes, and the guys who've been ready to whoop up on Paul, whooped up on Sosthenes. Imagine Paul walks away from there going, wow, that was close. By the way, I've got to tell you one little factoid before we finish up. When you read the opening to 1 Corinthians, right, a letter written to this church that Paul runs into, that Paul begins here, listen to the first verse of Corinthians. First, first Corinthians, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, same guy, somewhere with the same name. Inquiring minds want to know. Thursday and Friday, God willing, we'll get to talk about Paul's ministry in Ephesus and about his final trip to Jerusalem, at least as recorded in the book of Acts, his arrest a series of trials. I look forward again to seeing you this afternoon at four. God bless you. Have a good day. So long.